Hello everyone and welcome to episode 11 of the Property Investing Podcast brought to you by Real Estate Investor. I'm Dennis Wong, Product and Training Manager and in this episode, I'm going to cover the ongoing expenses that every property investor needs to be aware of, both expected and unexpected, and also provide a quick update on the new features that have been recently launched to our pro membership. So let's get straight into episode 11. Now, as a property investor, there's going to be ongoing costs that you'll need to budget for once your property is tenanted. In addition to loan repayments, there are the standard expected annual expenses like council rates, uh, water rates, landlord insurance, building insurance, property management fees, uh, letting fees. Uh, If you're in an apartment or a townhouse complex, then there's going to be body corporate or strata fees as well. And you need to have a bit of money left aside as well for general repairs or maintenance issues. Now, the budget for repairs or maintenance items doesn't need to be huge, but if you do have an older property, then you may need a bigger budget. Now, I thought I'd highlight some of the unexpected costs that every investor should consider or factor in uh, the longer that you hold uh, any particular property. Of course, every property is in a different condition, there are different ages, so not all will be relevant but it's important to know what they are and whether they would apply to any of your properties in your current portfolio. Now, the first item are air conditioners. You know, it's important that you service these annually to ensure that they're well looked after and performing efficiently. You know, having the filters and vents cleaned and any mold removed will help the units last longer and hopefully avoid having to replace the entire unit uh, much sooner. Now, this also includes ducted air conditioners, probably even more important because of the the investment, and if it breaks down, it does mean that the whole property won't have any air. Now, in addition to this, other electrical items that you may need to replace include things um, such as dishwashers, uh, stove tops, ceiling fans, bathroom exhaust fans, the garage door, uh, or even the kitchen range hood. Um, so it, re- it would be really good to understand uh, when you're purchasing an investment property how old it is and how old these items may be as well. Next is the water heater or the hot water system. You know, check how old the current system is because the older it is, the more likely you'll need uh, need replacing soon. Now, another item to consider is a leaky roof. Now, not everyone gets to inspect a property when it's raining to see whether there are any issues. So this could be something that you'll only discover once you've actually moved in uh, or your tenants moved in and then you start to notice leaks. You know, if you're looking at renovating your house, this may be worth um, you know, it may be a good opportunity to have your roof checked out and also refresh with some paint. Now, continuing on with the same theme of leaks, you may need to fork out some funds to replace any leaky taps or toilets. So it may even be worth checking uh, if there are any tile cracks in the showers, because if so, there may be water underneath the tiles, which can cause huge problems later on. Now, for those who have an investment property that's part of a strata, there may be special levies that may pop up. So this generally focus uh, will occurs for older properties where there could be a major issue where extra money needs to be raised from all the owners to cover that issue or to rectify that issue. Now, even worse, if there isn't much money in the sinking fund, so it's important that you check the balance before buying into any strata complex. You know, for example, you know, there could be a leak in the swimming pool and that pool is positioned above the underground car park and water has actually now gone through to that car park and a lot of work structurally needs to be done to fix the issue uh, and waterproofing that area. You know, this could be thousands of dollars or it will more likely be in the tens of thousands of dollars uh, depending on the extent of the damage. Now, pest control is another expense that should be considered annually. You know, having your property sprayed and checked to ensure there aren't any pests like termites. Uh, Next, for those who have gardens or a yard, there may be repairs that you need to pay for, such as fixing the fence, gates, retaining walls, or removing overgrown trees. Depending on how detailed your garden is, uh, you may need to engage in a gardener to visit once a month to maintain them. Uh, Unless, of course, the tenant has agreed to look after them and and it's agreed upon in the lease agreement, which, in my opinion, will be highly unlikely. Uh, For for landlords who have a swimming pool uh, on their property, there may be pool cleaning fees that you need to budget for as well. Now, in most cases, you can pass this cost onto the tenant, you know, add it onto the rent, for example, but you'll need to be agreed upon first in the the lease agreement. 
Now, for anyone using platforms such as Airbnb or stays.com.au, you know, you're renting your properties out for short stays, you'll need to factor in any admin fees that these platforms charge as well as cleaning fees if you're gonna be contracting this out after every stay. Finally, for those who have an older property and are looking to hold it for a long period of time, at some point, renovations may be an exercise that you're gonna to have to go through. The longer you hold the property, the older it becomes, and in most areas, there are gonna be new developments and properties available for rent and sale. Newer properties are gonna be more attractive to renters, so you may need to improve your property to stay competitive, keep your property modern, and be attractive to potential tenants. Now, for those listeners who are already members of our Pro membership, I wanted to take this quick opportunity to update you on the new feature releases that were launched a few weeks ago. Under Investor Search, we've now added additional bedroom count filters of 15, 20, 30, and 50 into both the minimum and maximum filters. For those property investors who are looking at positive cash flow properties, these filters can help you identify potential rooming or boarding house properties. Now, under my value or my research, there have been a few new updates. The valuation estimate has been updated, so it now includes a low and high range price, as well as a rental and yield estimate. Uh, Next, when running a market activity report, whether it's uh, sold, for sale, or for rent, the search result display is now much bigger, so it makes it easier to read, and it now includes all photos for the property that you can access from the one spot. Um, Also, up to five years of land valuations in New South Wales has now been added to the property reports. Uh, Now, when running a rentals market activity report, once the report launches, under search summary tab, you can quickly see the average and median days it takes a rental properties to rent out. Finally, under the suburb flyover report, the 2016 census data has now been added. You can also compare the data from the 2011 census so you can see if there have been any changes to demographics such as the age of the population, household incomes, and family composition. Well, thank you so much for listening. That's it for episode 11 of the Property Investing Podcast from Real Estate Investor. If you'd like any more information on the new features that I spoke about, please register for one of our upcoming training webinars or you're more than welcome to get in touch with us at info at realestateinvestor.com.au. For those that aren't pro members, feel free to book in for a one-on-one demo. I'd be more than happy to take you through the tools. So thanks for listening. And until our next episode, happy investing and I'll catch you next time.